Hello and welcome to Andrew's Fever Dream uh, or the million subscriber special. Uh, that's what this is. I tried to render a million donuts, probably ended up with quite a few more. So this is going to be a tutorial on how to render an infinite amount of objects using some, uh, some tricky hacks and things in Blender. So hope you enjoy this tutorial. So how do you render infinite piles of stuff? Well, the method that I discovered works best is uh, three steps. It's rigid bodies, baking, and then micro displacements. You start with a low poly version of, in this case, a donut, uh, use an array system to make like a tray of them, right? And then you use rigid body to make that fall on a plane. I've got a full tutorial on rigid body if you want to check that out, but it's it's pretty simple. Then if you just duplicate that trace as many times as you want, rotate them in slight various ways so that it looks interesting. And then if you let them fall, they should just make like a big mess, like a big pile of donuts. The aim is to make it so that you can't really see through it. They all just sort of looked wedged in there together. That's nice. Um, then uh, you, you freeze the, the rigid body sim so that it's static. And then you want to replace, you don't need the low poly versions anymore. So if you select all that and then just select the high poly version last, if you hit control L and then select object data, it's now going to override the high poly mesh over the top of the position of the low poly stuff. So now it's, uh, now it's the proper finished donuts. And then it's time to do the baking baking. Um, I say that in inverted commas because it's really just, uh, it's, a, it's a render. So you, you add a camera and then you position that directly above it looking down and then you want to set the dimensions of it to be square because for textures, all textures should be square. And if you change the camera type to be uh, orthographic, it's also going to remove any perspective and it's just going to help for baking a texture, right? You don't want any any perspective in there. Um, and then the lighting, you don't want any lamps, any direction in it. You want it to look kind of like an overcast sky. So remove any lamps and then just set the world color to white so that it's just completely flat lighting. And then you should get something that looks like this, which is pretty cool. But if you want to make the, uh, the icings look different, then you can also use that little trick that we did for the full donut tutorial for the sprinkles. Um, and that's just to use a object info random through a color ramp set your colors and then they all get one of those colors, which is kind of cool. Now, rendered it out, it looks cool, but the real magic and the whole reason for doing this, this thing is that we want to have like accurate like bumps, like accurate geometry for each of these donuts. And to do that, we need to get depth information from this render. So a blender comes with a, a depth pass, but the problem with it is that it's got aliasing problems. It doesn't have anti-aliasing, so it's got these jagged edges and it looks horrible. So the way around it is to use not the uh, depth pass, but the mist pass. So if you go to the uh, render layer pass settings, you see a mist checkbox, you check that box and then go to your camera and then enable uh, underneath viewport options uh, mist. And then you'll see like a start and end point for where it's calculating mist um, and then go to your world settings and you'll have a start and end point for the mist. So then you just set that to be like the top of the donuts and the bottom of the donuts. And then if you rendered it, you would see uh, in the mist pass, you would get something like this, which looks lovely. Now, if you were to try to use this texture and tile it across a surface, then you would see some pretty obvious seams because we haven't made it seamless yet. So there's really jarring lines in it. So. This is something we do at Polygon. It's kind of one of our specialties. Somebody's job is to get rid of seams in photos. And I can tell you there are software out there that claims to do it automatically. They don't. They, they might be well at like one specific thing, but there's no like software that'll automatically get rid of seams well, at least. So we actually do it the old fashioned way with a clone brush. So uh, we actually use Affinity Photo because it enables you to paint across multiple layers, which is handy when you've got maps. Um, so we bring it into there, you use the Affine option, which is kind of like offset for Photoshop. And it just puts that seam right in the center there. And then it enables you to like clone brush it right across things. And and I was doing this for the donuts, but trouble is, is when you're working with donuts, it's like rings. And to create a continuous ring with a hole in the middle across it, it's a lot of work. Um, and then I realized like working digitally, I've got a blender file open here. Why don't I use that? So I selected everything except a crosshair right in the center of the frame, deleted all the other donuts, rendered that out, and then basically dragged that across and put it smack dab over the top of everything. And I did that for uh, both the color pass and the displacement pass, and it worked. It made it seamless. So then if you just re reverse the affine thing, you've got a seamless texture. So 
All that work was to give us these two maps, which is kind of crazy, but it gives us the power, the godlike power to make anything look like a pile of donuts. So if you took that color texture and then you put it across a plane, scale it, you can see that we get what looks like endless donuts. But the real power comes though with that displacement map. So if you take that displacement map, add it in there, make sure you set it to non-colored data, which is important because it's grayscale. Uh, and then you want to connect that to the displacement input right? It won't look correct by default because you need to add in a displacement node between it, connect that to the height info to convert grayscale to displacement. Great. Now, still doesn't look very good because this is fake bump. It's not changing, it's not adding any geometry detail or anything like that. It's just kind of faking it like an, uh, a normal map would. So what you want to do is go to the material settings and then where it says in the settings displacement, instead of bump only, you want to change that to displacement only. Um, and at first you'll see that nothing has changed. Um, and that is because it's actually looking for geometry on the plane to actually change that. And we've only got four vertices to play with. So what you want to do is add a sub surf modifier and if you increase that to its maximum amount you'd see little bumpy waves going across it so it's working but it doesn't have nearly enough information to work with so there's a little hidden feature in blender that you can only access by changing the mode to experimental don't know why because this feature has actually been in experimental for like three years i don't know when it's going to be out of experimental but anyways when you do that you should be able to go back to the subsurf modifier and you'll see a little checkbox there that says adaptive so if you check that what that's going to do is it's going to subdivide your mesh now dependent on your view so looking from your camera it's going to subdivide more towards the foreground close to the camera and then gradually fall off and subdivide less further away which is exactly what you want because you need that detail up close but you don't need all that detail at the back there because it's just a blurry tiny little pixel right so uh, so it's a really clever way to save on render time and memory um, with just checking that one little box um, and by the way in preview mode it's uh, it's only subdividing at like a kind of a low res amount um, you can actually see that in the subdivision settings of your render there um, if you change that closer like I usually just go uh, two for preview and then one for render the lower you value you set that to by the way the more it's going to be subdividing it so it's kind of reversed to what you'd think um, but then you'll be able to see it and then when you do a final render you actually get the full polished thing and um yeah you get some pretty convincing looking donuts finally but there is a problem problem you might have noticed is that you can see a repeating pattern right and that's you know even though we went to the trouble of making this texture seamless if you te if you tile something like a hundred times doesn't matter it's you're still your eye is going to be able to detect repeating patterns doesn't matter what sort of amazing wizard you've got with the seamless brush you're still going to see it there's no way around it but I saved this right for the end because this is the closest thing to sorcery uh, that I've seen in a while um, except for maybe November that was pretty nuts um, but so basically at, at Polygon we've been trying to solve this problem so Bill Barber who works for us um, has been hard at work developing a solution for this um, and we're calling it the uber mapping node and we're giving it away for free so if you click the link in the description you'll be able to download it um, but basically once you've downloaded it you go to file append click on that blend file go to node tree and then you just want to append in that one little node tree there called the Polygon uber mapping node so when you do that you go back to your your, your shader settings here. And then uh, where it's got that texture coordinate thing, just delete that and then go shift A, uh, group, and then the polygon uber mapping node. And it's gonna add in this little node here and that's just gonna replace it, right? Now, uh, the setting at the top there for scale, set that to 15, which is basically what we had before. Nothing else has changed. Now these first four values, they're just kind of global values. You can ignore those. The real gold is right down here at the bottom, these two values of mosaic. If you set the mosaic rotation to pretty much anything other than zero, you'll see magic occur. <laughs> so uh, if you look at grid view, you can actually see what it's doing here. Um, instead of it just being squares that are like in a grid that's repeating, um, it's taking those squares and then it's sort of rotating them in kind of a Veroni pattern. And it's a simple thing, but it breaks it up to a point that your eye can't detect a repeating pattern anymore. And if you actually uh, increase mosaic noise as well, then instead of a straight edge, you also get a uh, kind of a broken up 
noisy edge. And it's amazing, it's like magic. It's now you've got like uh, something that'll actually infinitely tile and you won't be able to see, um, see it, which is really, really crazy. Uh, the only downside is that you will actually get uh, seams now because it's, it is actually creating hard seams there. Um, but because we made it seamless, our original texture, at least we don't have double seams. Um, and since it's you know breaking up the pattern so well, you're not really gonna be able to see those extra seams it's creating anyway. So, but that's the hard work done. The rest is really just making this infinite landscape look convincing. So I added little hills uh, just by adding another noise texture into the displacement info, which is pretty simple and it looks pretty convincing. Um, but you can see that as with all hacks in 3D, the illusion breaks down up close. So what I did was I just made a little hill right in front of the camera, and then I just did another rigid body sim right in front of the camera, and then the illusion is undetectable, right? So in the background, it looks just like an endless seam of donuts. Uh, there's little problems in there, but you can't see it because it's far enough away. And then in the foreground, it's uh, it's covered with real donuts, which of course you wouldn't be able to see any problems because it's not a hack. And that's it. That's how you make an infinite landscape of anything. Um, so 3D art is really all about little tricks like this. I spend like a lot of time reading articles, watching tutorials from other software, going to conferences and picking up this stuff along the way. Um, but I know that most people don't have time to look up this stuff. So what I've done is I've made a newsletter. It's called the This Week in 3D Newsletter. And it's once a week where I share three to five links of videos, articles, anything that I've found uh, useful. And then I just share it with you. So there's 200,000 people on this list, it's totally free. So there's a link to that in the description. So if you wanna be part of that, click that, join it, and I hope to see you on there. But otherwise, thanks for watching and subscribe to see more videos like this. Bye.